From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Friday, September 30th. New this morning, several deaths are being blamed on Hurricane Ian as rescue crews work to save others who could be trapped in flooded homes. CBS's Christian Benavides has the latest. Near Fort Myers, search and rescue teams brought residents of Sanibel and Captiva to safety and scoured the barrier islands for signs of life. So people that were surprised by how quickly the storm turned and ended up being trapped. Hurricane Ian's massive storm surge ripped away large parts of the Sanibel Causeway, cutting off access by land. Across Florida, the destruction can be seen from the air for miles around. At the storm's peak, Naples Fire and Rescue had to break the window of this car to pull a woman to safety. Throughout much of the state, people are assessing their losses and counting their blessings. I'm trying to be brave. After Ian made landfall as a Category 4 hurricane Wednesday with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour, it tore apart this Fort Myers trailer park. I literally watched my house disappear with everything in it. In this central Florida retirement community yesterday afternoon, airboats with rescue crews were a welcome sight. I didn't realize they had a storm until they told me. I was asleep. Here in Kissimmee near Orlando, the city has implemented a mandatory curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. because of major flooding in all the county, says Ian, dropped more than a foot of rain. We're going to do our best to build Florida back as quickly as possible, but we're not going to be leaving. At FEMA headquarters in Washington, President Biden said as soon as conditions allow, he will visit Florida and Puerto Rico, which was ravaged by Hurricane Fiona just days ago. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, Kissimmee, Florida. And most Florida residents left the state before the hurricane hit, and some of them ended up here in Montana. Q2's Haley Monaco spoke with one woman now waiting to return and ready to get to work cleaning up the giant mess the storm left behind. As we're learning more about the devastation caused by Hurricane Ian, we're also learning more about the Montana connections to the storm, including one family who was here on vacation when the storm hit. For most of us, vacation is a chance to escape our everyday troubles and clear the mind. That's exactly what Tanya and Balaj Boldowski hoped to do when they boarded a flight to Montana a week ago, just days before the hurricane hit their hometown of Naples. We saw that something was coming, but didn't think anything of it. That quickly changed just days into their vacation. Right now, we're checking all the airports and everything. The family is now trying to get home to Naples as fast as they possibly can, and not just to check on their home. The Boldoskis just also happen to own a water restoration business. Well, our phones this morning have been ringing off the hook, like, can you help my dad? Can you help my grandma? Can you help my customer? Meanwhile, Lisa Smith is trying to do the opposite. Last night, it was there was a lot of wind, a lot of debris falling everywhere. Uh, the lake behind us uh, was overflowing. Smith lives here in Billings, but is on vacation right now in Florida. She booked the trip to West Palm Beach six months ago, never expecting her timing would be so terrible. You could see the signs, you know, the, the beach was getting a little rough. Fortunately, Smith has experienced her fair share of hurricanes and knew what to expect. Before moving to Billings, she lived in Miami, Florida for 30 years. Uh, I was expecting more. Uh, but we, you know, thankfully we didn't experience what other people are experiencing, you know. Smith plans on flying home Tuesday. As for the Boldoskis, they're hopeful they'll also get back home to Florida soon to start helping their employees and begin restoring some of the many homes damaged in the storm. We actually um, lost our home to a fire before, so different scenario, but the same destruction. And so it's it's sad what these people are going through to lose everything. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. All right, and time now to get a check of the weather back here in Montana with mm -hmm. Miller and uh, look at that. Last day of September. Can you believe it? Tomorrow's no. October, last quarter of the year. My favorite time of the year. I love fall, I love winter, I love Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Yeah, it's all nice. I mean, yeah. pumpkin spice, oh, holiday go. baking, like all of this stuff. It's yeah, great. it's good. about to get very busy. <laughs> yes, it yeah, is. All right. Let's talk about the latest on the hurricane. Uh, Ian, in fact, we have a live shot, I believe, of uh, is that Myrtle Beach. 
You can see, yeah, the waves are uh, really big and strong. Now, the storm surge down there, you got to worry about that. Of course, the hurricane force winds, tornado activity is possible. The latest is still a hurricane. Max sustained winds of 85 miles an hour going to make landfall uh, somewhere in South Carolina today. And um, so those folks down there got to watch out. Not only do they have to worry about uh, the rain and the winds, they got to worry about, again, tornado activity. Some uh, tornadoes may actually kick up. It's about a 2% chance right now, but in terms of weather, that's a pretty, pretty decent chance of seeing that happen. So we'll definitely have to monitor that. Hopefully you don't have any friends or family down there. If you do, we'll say a little prayer for them, okay? For us, we got a lot of rainfall in the forecast and we got cooler temperatures. Maybe a good uh, 20, 25 degrees cooler today than it was yesterday. We got up to 85 above average, well above average. Overnight low got down to about 53. Did have some storms come around the area, so we did get some winds off of that. Really no rain to speak of here in Billings yesterday. Uh, the moisture total to wrap up the month. We're in the hole for the year. We're still on the plus side, but we are still very dry out there in, cur in, cur in terms of the uh, the drought situation. All right, temperature wise right now 56 here in Billings. Uh, may not get much warmer than we are right now. Going to be nice and chilly for the next couple of days with a lot of rainfall. We'll have a complete look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. Right, and like you said, you don't get to say grab your umbrella very often. But I know, today is I don't a day. say that. Today's a day yeah. and you'll need it for the next, at least through tomorrow, maybe Sunday as well. Okay, all yeah. right, thanks a lot, Miller. Okay. With the November election right around the corner, the Billings YWCA and the Montana Department of Justice is reminding survivors of domestic violence that they can register to vote with keeping their address confidential from their abusers. I had the chance to visit with these organizations about this lifeline to Montana victims. And the more trapped I became, the more I felt like I was just going to be a slave for the rest of my life. There was no getting out. Towards the end, he was threatening to kill me and the kids. Victims of domestic violence like this Montana survivor often live in fear. It's a barrier to voting as registering to vote can put a bullseye directly on them as their address is publicly listed. Victims of domestic violence, sexual assault and stalking live in fear of the person who harmed them and having a place that they can live and know that their address will be completely confidential gives them such a sense of peace. The Department of Justice launched its address address confidentiality program back in 2006. It works by providing victims a substitute address with a free first class confidential mail forwarding service. By using the substitute address, which is actually our address in Helena, a uh, abuser may be able to track them down to Helena, but then we protect their actual physical address. The Helena team has come face to face with abusers. It can be some pretty intense conversations at times. Right now, the address confidentiality program has 61 participants enrolled. There's certainly a lot more victims in Montana than, than 61 people. The victims that are in our program are are, are scared. Jones says the program works best for survivors who are moving to a different town and completely restarting their life. If you're just if you're moving from Helena to East Helena, for example, this program is probably not going to help you that well. You know, same with our reservation communities. You know, it's it's a tight knit communities and too many people know no people. To apply for the program, the DOJ requires proof of being a victim of domestic violence, sexual assault or stalking, such as a protection order or police report, and proof of Montana residency. If you or someone you know are eligible to register, visit your local MTN website. Happening this morning, a portion of the Beartooth Highway will be closed for winter weather concerns. At 8 a.m., the section located east of the park's northeast entrance between Red Lodge and Cook City is shutting down. Heavy snow and hazardous driving conditions are expected throughout the weekend. The highway will reopen as conditions allow. We're continuing to track substance abuse issues in Montana. As Q2's Casey Conlon tells us, some of the area's top law enforcement officials are getting together to discuss ideas on how to fix a growing problem. Ask any health or law enforcement organization in Billings and they'll all tell you that substance abuse is the number one problem in this city. It has been for years, but it's worse now as drugs find their way into every corner of our community, including right here inside the Yellowstone County Jail. We're able in most cases to be able to head that off before it gets in, but once in a while something gets through. 
The numbers are staggering. In an interview with MTN Thursday morning, Montana Attorney General Austin Knutson said meth is still king. The state saw a 100% increase in violations from 2014 to 2018. But the number of fentanyl overdose deaths is up over 1,000% in the last six years. We've seized this year already over 111,000 dosage units of fentanyl. Uh, it's not stretching the truth to say probably wow. enough to kill every man, woman, and child in the state. Yellowstone County Sheriff Mike Linder says the jail is his most critical mission right now, and getting substance abusers help instead of incarcerated is key. We got a 434 bed jail, we got 560 or 570 people in there. Whatever we can do to divert. Then on the other end, uh, when people get out of the jail, uh, that they have a goal or some kind of help. And that's what uh, SAC or Substance Abuse Connect has really done for us. Substance Abuse Connect is made up of just about every major group in the county that deals with the crisis. Founded in 2017, they announced some successes at a Thursday press conference, including a new homeless outreach team. They have served over 170 clients, and 71% of those have moved to recovery and housing and or receive treatment services. School District 2 Superintendent Greg Upham spoke about the need for SAC programs in schools. We are in a war. There's, there's no doubt about it. And what I've seen uh, with the way our youth are targeted, I just shake my head when I see it. Rimrock Foundation CEO Lynette Kosevich summed it up with her initial reaction to this question. Have you seen more patients with these types of problems? Especially over the last couple of years. It does seem like things are a little bit more uh, in, in a higher crisis situation, and um, the, the need for SAC has never been greater. That's why so many were in attendance Thursday. SAC is on track, but there's much more to be done. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. City Council is denying a zoning request to build a car wash in the Cedar Park subdivision near the Billings landfill. 115 of the neighbors' residents signed a petition saying they wanted no part of the additional traffic the business would bring to that area. Council members agreed, denying the request after two hours of deliberation.